Greetings! We are coming kind of live from the Autobahn and out of what is easily the best electric car I've ever driven or in fact it's the only good one and it's a Kia. Yes, the Kia e-Miro which is a weird name for a car until you realize the names of other cars are also kind of weird a lot of the time and yeah it's it's actually a really good car which for those of my who know me um, I don't like electric cars in fact I kind of hate them not just because of what they are but because of what they could be but aren't and they could be great they could be really amazing because they could drive perfectly smooth, uh, perfectly quiet, but the manufacturers either forget to put a decent sized battery in it, or a decently sized motor, or both, or pretty much everything in the case of the Dacia. Then again, it's very cheap, but you get what you pay for, but we'll come to that later. The Kia is the first one that kind of lives up to the expectations that are based on the figures that the manufacturers give you. The only cars I can compare it to are not I have not driven every electric car on the market obviously that would take a bit more time but um, Tesla Model no, Model 3 uh, the Polestar 2 which is basically an electric Volvo uh, BMW i3 uh, the infamous Dacia Spring electric Mini and the electric Fiat 500 and the Renault Zoe let's not forget that that was the only decent one so far and the other ones were kind of between okay but not even remotely living up to the hype or downright shit this one is I think in this version it's about 30,000 with all state funding and, and all that included which is almost three times as much as the Dacia which starts at about 11,000 which seems reasonably cheap at first until you realize how shit it is um, it's a reasonable price uh, space spacious didn't know that was a hard word reasonably spacious car enough room for well I would say five people but that would be a lie but uh, two grown-ups and three children no problem um, the boot is reasonably sized it's driving well it has all the stuff that you need sat nav um, cruise control um, the AC is a bit weird because you have to turn on the AC and the heating so that the AC heats up the car otherwise it's just trying to cool the car which is a bit weird if you set the AC to 27 degrees Celsius and it's 7 degrees outside and the car is still putting out cold air it took me a while to figure that one other than that, uh, the papers say it has 29 kilowatts of power and it weighs 1.8 tons. So on paper it has less power than my first car, which was an old Dacia, uh, no not Dacia, luckily not. Daihatsu Core, and that one had about 40 kilowatts of power and it only weighed 800 kilos, not, not even 800, it weighed I think it was 795 or 93 and that was a sluggish car <laughs> it was tiny and sluggish 
this one is none of that. The acceleration is very decent. Um, um, it feels right at home on the autobahn. Just as much as the uh, Polestar and the Tesla, which are about 10,000 euros more expensive and have significantly more horsepower. I have not driven them, those two, that much, but the problem with most of those cars, the basic problem of an electric car these days is the range. The Polestar claims to have well over 300 kilometers of range. I'd say T50, if you're pushing it, maybe 280. The Tesla, eh, about 300. But those are far and away the best one. The, the Zoe might also get to 250 for driving really carefully. Really, really carefully. But with the other three, with the um, Deja, the Mini and the Fiat, I've occasionally turned off the AC and was crawling along at about 100 to 110 kilometers an hour maximum just to make it from one charging point to the other about 100 maybe 120 kilometers that would leave me with 20 maybe 30 35 kilometers to spare if the charging point was not working which it occasionally did although mostly with the data and I suspect the problem was not with the charging point but with the car because everything in that car is just ridiculously cheap. This one I started driving at about 97% of charge and easily drove slightly over 300 kilometers all across Germany in winter through hilly terrain, city, uh, country roads, uh, most of it was autobahn, cruising along smoothly at about 150, 120, just like I would with a normal petrol powered car and um, I was in no hurry to find a charging point because I still had over 50 kilometers of range left. I could have gone a bit slower and had 60, maybe 70 more. And that is so far removed from everything I experienced in electric cars so far. It's insane. Also, the um, energy consumption is ridiculous. This thing cruise along at, I guess, probably have an average of about 150 to 120, you know, as I said, on the autobahn. And that is a speed that the Dacia hardly can go to. I think the official maximum speed is 125, although I do not recommend it if you want to get anywhere with that car because that would drain the battery in no time. It's like getting on the throttle in Tesla or the Polestar. Yeah, they are quick cars. They can go like 200 kilometers an hour or something like that. Tesla can go faster. But if you do that, your range is just disappearing. It's just gone. And even at allegedly 150, 120, again, the Tesla will maybe give you 300 kilometers. But you should be looking for the next charging point after 250. You should really, really be looking for it. 
um, the pole star is significantly less and everything else is just not usable for longer distances. Um, this one compared to the Deja, which sadly is the one that I've driven the most, the Deja has a whopping 19 kilowatts of engine power, 19, and it weighs a ton. And it doesn't go all that fast. <laughs> it's the speed I'm doing right now, I'm doing 120 kilometers an hour. That is almost top speed in the Dacia. And with this, it's just cruising. Um, but this car has 50% more power than the Dacia on paper. It feels like a lot more. It weighs 80% more. 80. It drives 10% faster and it needs 10% less energy. I have no idea how Kia is doing that or how Dacia is doing that. To be honest, that is probably the, the bigger miracle that the Dacia is able to consume that much energy to drag a car that light along at that slow speed. It's, this thing again almost weighs twice as much. It goes faster on average and it needs less fuel. That is... I, I have no idea how that is possible. But I see it right in front of me. I have about 55% of charge left on the car. It tells me I can go 218 kilometers which is about twice what I would recommend going in the Dacia, in the Fiat 500 electric or in the Mini electric. You could technically go a little further in the later two if you're going slowly and, well, if you turn off the AC. And I got the AC on. It's really comfortable in here. It's nice and warm. See, I'm not wearing my jacket. It's a great car. It's just an all around great car. And even at the same price as the Polestar and the Tesla, it would still be the better car. And I'm sounding like James May. Luckily, I didn't look like him. That would be weird. Um, to quote a wise man, if you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for the Kia e-Niro, which is a properly good car. I, I didn't think I would say that this year for an electric car. I, I thought it would take another few years to, to uh, one came around. Before I drove them, I thought electric cars would be great. They, make no noise and I like things to make no noise uh, they have great acceleration and I like things to have great acceleration and uh, on paper they all had reasonable rims I mean 230 kilometers is kind of okay but the car that has 230 kilometers on paper has about 120 in reality and well, maybe 140 if you charge the battery to 100%, but to charge the battery from 20 to 80% takes about 40 minutes. To charge it from 80 to 100% takes another 40 minutes. No one in his right mind is charging his electric car to 100%. It's not. For one, it's bad for the battery, and secondly, it takes forever. The last few percent, the, the f more you fill up the battery, the longer it takes to fill it up even further. So, best thing you get usually is about 80%. That's that's what people are using, that people should be using. And 
with all the other cars so far, the thing is that the manufacturers gave were ridiculous. I, I think the uh, Polestar was quoted as yielding about 17 point something kilowatt per hour in the uh, standardized testing cycle and I personally never got it to less than that, I think about 22.8 and the Dacia was at 18 point something and it, that one is quoted at 13 point something you, you can't you can't do 13 point something with the day shift going over 100 kilometers an hour and in terrain that is not flat and outside of you know, spring or something where you don't need the AC at all and none of those problems apply to this one this is a good car this has an effective range of well, I'd say 350, 350 kilometers, maybe 370, but that would mean to risk running out of electricity. Uh, and all of this is with outside temperatures of about 5 degrees Celsius, which is not something electric cars like particularly much. That drains the battery a lot more than it would drain your fuel tank in a normal car. And it was up until the last 20 or 30 kilometers, it was just up and down all the way, and it was no problem whatsoever. Overtaking trucks on the country road, no problem. It's just a good car, period. If you want an electric car, don't buy any of, any of the others. Don't, just don't. Um, maybe if you have too much money and you really want something that is very quick, I guess the Porsche, uh, I think it's Taycan, Taycan, whatever, the electric Panamera basically. That one is probably a very good car. The range is probably shit if you're going fast, but it will be comfortable. Even with four people in it, it will be quick. And it will have everything. But it will be expensive as fuck. And this one isn't. So, if you want a reasonably priced electric car, don't go anywhere else. Kia, that's that's where it is.